Welcome to Guerrilla Discipleship. I'm your host, Kevin Baker. It's so good to be with you all today. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I want to talk with you today about uh, great things. We have a great God. And I believe God expects, desires, wants us to, to ask for great things. And I think that God wants us to partner with him for great things. And yet, at least in my mind, sometimes it feels as if we are asking God just to help us survive often. Uh, we're, we're asking God for small things rather than great things. Maybe we've even lost the ability to imagine what kind of great things God might even invite us into. You know, in the history of the church, there were times when uh, the leading people of, of the culture were coming out of the church, what God was doing. For instance, the printing press, simple thing, but how it's transformed our culture and the world, and it was all basically trying to spread the gospel. It was coming out of a desire to have the Bible available to others. And then, man, at some point, followers of Jesus were instrumental in education, wanting to teach young people how to read so that they could read the scriptures for themselves. We built hospitals. And so there's a part of us that I believe in, in ways that maybe we haven't even thought about, have begun to think about the church and the role of followers of Jesus in terms of small things rather than great things. In our secular culture, followers of Jesus have been relegated. The government now takes care of all the big things. And the church, well, you know, in fact, in this pandemic, liquor stores were essential, but churches were not. That's, I think, how the culture sees us. And I'm afraid that in some ways, it may be that we're beginning to think of ourselves that way as well. Here at Guerrilla Discipleship, what we know is that God wants to use each and every one of us, not only individually, but as we gather together as a force for good in the world, a force for transformation, that we are the salt and the light of the world. If you remember in John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus was with his disciples and he was beginning to comfort them about something they didn't even know was coming. He had been telling them that he was going to go to Jerusalem and die, but they, of course, struggled to believe that their leader, their rabbi, would ever suffer that fate. They were determined to stop his death, even though it was the plan that God had for us all along. Jesus begins to, begins to comfort his disciples by telling them to trust in him, that God was going to work out his plan and that there were great things awaiting. You remember that little interchange in the first part of John's gospel, chapter 14. And Philip at one point says to Jesus, Jesus, just show us the Father. They wanted to see God. That's what they wanted, and, and that's all they needed. That's what Philip said. Jesus, just show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And then Jesus, I, I can almost hear the heartbreak in his voice. He says, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been with you for such a long time. If you've seen me, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How are you still asking for me to show you the Father? Then he goes on and he says, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? Don't you believe that the words that I'm speaking to you are not my own words? They're the words the Father has given me. If you can't figure that out, can't you at least see the Father in the works that I'm doing? Who else could do the kind of work that I'm doing? And then he says this in verse 12. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? Whoever believes in Jesus will do the works that he's been doing. What were the works that he had been doing? Well, primarily the work that Jesus had been doing was proclaiming the kingdom and healing the sick. He had been demonstrating the love of God, the power of God, and the presence of God to the world. Jesus says that's exactly what we're going to do. But he goes on and says something else. He says, they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Oh, not only are we going to do what Jesus did, 
we're going to do greater things than what Jesus did. And he finishes this little this little statement to Philip and the, the uh, disciples this way. He says, and I'll do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Talk about throwing open the gates of heaven. Talk about giving us not only a command to do great things, but, but really even not a command, just saying it's going to happen. Stating, Jesus stated it as a fact. If you believe in me, you'll do the things I've been doing. And if you really believe in me, you'll do greater things because I, Jesus says, I'm gonna go to the Father and intercede. And if you will ask me, then I will ask the Father, I will intercede so that the Father's name can be glorified through the Son. That's what the Son wanted more than anything else, to glorify the Father. I mean, think about that. We get so nervous about the smallest things. We are so worried about the conversation, a spiritual conversation that we might have, or even inviting someone to let us pray for them. We're so, and yet Jesus walked so confidently. Jesus was a confident man. He was never hurried. He was never frightened. He walked confidently because he knew his father was with him. How much more should we walk confidently because the son of God is not only with us, but for us. And just after that, Jesus goes on and, and talks about that he is going to send us the power that raises that, that actually raised him from the dead, that the Spirit of God will be in us and with us, and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have become so used to living powerless lives. We've become so used to living out of our own strength, and so we too often think, well, what could I do? And we've got to continue to move ourselves to the place where we ask ourselves, not what can I do, but what could God do? And how do I partner with him? What is God doing? And how do I join him there? And what is God inviting me to risk? What is God inviting me to ask? Because Jesus says, if we ask in his name, whatever it is, that's that's how open the door is. Whatever you ask in my name, that he will do. God invites us to begin to attempt great things, to, to actually live into the reality that God wants to use us for amazing things in this world. What would it be like if we began to pray that way? When someone said, hey, my friend is sick, my father is sick, my kids are sick, that we would begin to pray believing healing is coming, the kingdom is at work, the kingdom power is available to us. Not that all of us have the gift of healing, but that Jesus has said, if we will lift him high, that he will draw people to himself. That Jesus has said that if we will live in confidence with him, we will express the kingdom of God on earth in the same way that Jesus did. Boy, that puts a bit of a burden on us in some respects, doesn't it? That, and the burden is not the power that all comes from God. It's God going to do the work in us and through us. The burden is really, do we trust Jesus enough? Do we believe in him? Are we willing to be the kind of people that would attempt great things for God in this moment of time? Our world is in need of some great moments, right? Our world, our culture. Just before I sat down to speak with you, I got a call from one of the police officers in our church here at Oakdale Church, and they told me that there was a, a, a shooting next door to our church and that the suspect was on the loose, and he wanted me to, to just know that. In fact, he said, you know, might be wise to just keep your doors locked. Well, we have a preschool, so I made sure that everyone in the building knew, and we locked the doors, and we just sat and prayed and trusted that the police and the Lord would take care of what needed to happen. And of course, the suspect was caught and we were told that everything was okay. It's right here. Now we can sit in fear about all of that and we can recoil and say, oh my goodness, look what happened. Or we can say, this is not too much for our God. The mental illness 
uh, epidemic in our culture is not too much for our get, our God. The violent epidemic that we're experiencing is not too much for our God. The political dividedness that keeps us from solving problems and just keeps us talking badly about one another is not too big for our God. In fact, God wants to bring his power, his healing, and his presence into each one of these situations, and he wants us to do it with him. What is the great thing that God is inviting you into? I believe God's inviting those of us who are listening to him today, those of us who are willing to follow him today into great things. Our culture, I believe, is at a moment where they need to be reminded that there is a God, that we, we, we don't just rely on governments or human strength. We don't just fret and worry. We actually call out on a God who is able to move all over the world. He is in charge of the nations. He is in charge of the kingdoms, and our God's plan will never fail. Let's attempt great things for God, and let's do it together. Jesus said the world would know we are his, we, we are his disciples by our love for one another. Let's not do this alone. Let's do this together, but let's each one of us get on the field. Let's each one of us Instead of sing, thinking someone else is going to do this, let's each one of us say, God, what are you inviting me to do? Maybe it's to start a conversation with your neighbor because something great is going to happen out of that. Maybe, who knows, maybe it's to run for political office so that you can set a different tone. Maybe there's something God is inviting you to that I can't even imagine, but let's do it together in the power of God's spirit asking all things through the name of Jesus and watching what God will do. There is going to be coming. I believe even now we are on the precipice of a moment of a great awakening. I want to be a part of that. That's why we're doing all that we're doing. That's why disciple, uh, excuse me, guerrilla discipleship exists to invite you to be a part of a movement that God is building that's going to change the world. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I, I, as always, I, I'd love to hear from you. Kay Baker at Oakdale.Church. If there's a, uh, a way that we can connect better, let me know. Thanks for being a part of Guerrilla Discipleship today. And I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great week.